It's mid-September of 2016, and here we are with the latest singles case of the year, Case L. Now, if you guys did not see my review of Case K, the previous case, you can check it out in the description below under the related videos section. I reviewed a couple rusty cars and a new World Grand Prix pity very similar to the one that we'll be taking a look at today so let's just get right into the review then so i got these on amazon for 3.99 each i was actually able to get two sets of them one to open which are the ones you see right in front of you and a set to keep in the package now the ones i have back there are not on the best of cards unfortunately amazon is not the best packager but I can live with them for now and hopefully I'll be able to find some better condition ones in the store so I'm okay with a little car damage here and there. So like I was saying, I did get these on Amazon for $3.99 each as add-on items. Now if you guys don't already know, add-on items can be a bit tricky at times because you need at least $25 worth of other eligible merchandise in order to buy that one add-on item. Now that $25 total can include the price for the add-on item, but it's still a little hard to buy them because you can't just buy one. For example, I could not just buy Toga Gremlin and Jason Hubcap together because that would only be $7.98 plus tax and you need $25. So you do have to get a bunch of stuff to equal $25 or maybe you could just buy all of them at once. But we all know that that is sometimes not possible because all of these singles kind of come in sporadically and randomly. Now, if you are not an Amazon fan, you can also buy them on eBay from a USA seller or two. I haven't checked in a while, but I did see that a USA seller did have these in stock. And of course, some Chinese sellers have them as well, but they are loose and may have some defects. Now, these have not been found in the USA at any stores yet, nor in Europe or Canada. However, in Australia, quite a few people, at least that I know, have found them. And that's great because I know Australia doesn't tend to get all the new stuff at the time it comes out. But this year, they have been getting all the new cases and in fact, actually got the second to last case of the year that includes Brad Windmiller, the small Coriander Wide Track, and Darla Vanderson. But nonetheless, let's just get right into the review of each of these in their package and then we'll open them up and take a look at them loose. So, might as well start with Jason Hubcap here. He's in the Paris Parts Market series, as you can see, and he's actually the second to last one to be released. The other one being Alexis Wilson, who's going to be a deluxe. I do really like his art and how he's got that like little tire flipped up. That's pretty cool. We have the Cars Daredevil Garage app logo. Do not recommend the app at all, but if you want to try it, go right ahead. However, you'll probably have some hard time. He is number five out of six in the series. And there you have his name tag. On the back here, we can see Finn McMissile and Holly Schiffwell looking for Tom Bay, their informant in the Paris parts market. Both of them did get released this year in the series. Finn was just regular and Holly had an electroshock device, which is essentially a taser. And the description for this series reads, Finn McMissile and Holly Schiffel chase a suspicious looking character through the crowded aisles of a Paris parts market. Now, that's pretty inaccurate because the suspicious looking character was actually their informant Tom Bay. So there's a little bit of truth to that description, but I would reword it just a little bit. And we do have the instructions for the app on the front there. Again, I don't recommend it, but I am not forcing you to not use it. But like I've said before in many videos, it's not a good app. And a lot of people do agree with me. 
Up next is Toga Gremlin, another lemon with a torch, and I'll show the other lemons that have been released with torches later on in the video. So, he is in the Oil Rig Getaway series, another great series for the year. He is number 5 out of 8 in the series. And on the back here, we have another picture of Fimic Missile. He's getting quite the spotlight in some of the series this year, but in this picture, he's dodging an explosion on the oil rig. The description reads, The lemons think they've trapped Fimic Missile on an oil rig, but the secret agent plummets into the ocean for a dramatic escape. And that description is 100% accurate, no complaints there. And again, we have the instructions for the Daredevil Garage app. Now let's move on to M.A. Break Drum, who I actually already reviewed on my channel because I got her loose from China. And if you'd like to see that review, it will be down in the description below. So I won't talk as much about her loose in this video because I already did talk about her quite a bit in my other video. Now she is in the LA Speedway series. We have a nice background. I always did like the background for this series. Number 5 out of 11. How ironic is that? We have 5 out of 11, 5 out of 8, 5 out of 6. What a coincidence. And they're all in the same case. On the back, we have a picture of two cars that actually did not get released in the series. But Fred, which is this guy right here, was released in the Rusty's Racing Series. And this is Marco Axelbender, who was not released this year and has only been released in 2010. The description for the series reads, The tiebreaker race at the LA International Speedway will determine who is the new Piston Cup champion. Obviously, that race was between the King, Chick Hicks, and Lightning McQueen. You guys know what that is. And now let's check out the last one in this case. Okay, so this is a Francesco Bernoulli Pitti named Alex Makino. Now let me talk about something just for a second. I find it very interesting that they actually named this one with an actual name because for the two pities they released previously this year, they just called them what they were which was Jeff Gorvat Pity and Max Schnell's Pity. So a little inconsistent there, but I do prefer actual names. So good job, Mattel. And he is obviously in the World Grand Prix Pit Crew Series, number one out of nine. So he kind of breaks up the trend of fives there, but that's okay. The description for the series reads, Behind every famous World Grand Prix racer is a pit crew skilled in racing know-how. Their mission? Get their racer across the finish line first. And we have a picture of several Nigel Gearsley pitties, but none of them were actually released this year. But this guy, all the way over on the left, the crew chief for Nigel Gearsley, Austin Littleton, was released. Alright, so let's open these beauties up. I won't be opening M.A. Break Trim because I already have her loose, like I said earlier. These cars look great out of the package. So let's start with M.A. Braytro. I don't want to spend too much time on her, but I probably will because I have something pretty interesting to discuss. And we'll get to this in a moment, but I just want to focus on M.A. herself just for a couple seconds here. So she obviously appeared in the first Cars movie at the Los Angeles International Speedway in the stands while the Jets were going over alongside Coriander, Y-Track, and Brake Boyd. Now, as I said in my video about M.A. Brake Drum, this here is most likely a family. We have husband, wife, and their daughter. And it just makes sense. We have a red car and a blue car. And what do you get when you mix those two colors? You get purple. Also, when we did not know these guys' names, 
for sure, they were just called mom and dad. That's literally what Mattel coded them as on Amazon and in their case list. So it's pretty likely that this was intended to be a family. And if you want to hear more, you can just go to my review about M.A. So that's where she appeared and a little bit of a story about her. She's a red car, as you can see. Very, very nice. I like her rims. And she does have a license plate reading ML115, but that license plate is a very common license plate. Mattel likes to use that one. As you can see here, we have Kim Carlin's, and this is just one example of many examples. I believe it's Yvonne Gill the Holler, but overall, M.A. is a nice car. Now, getting to the mini M.A. here, you guys might be thinking, what in the world is that? Don't worry, I'll explain it all in a moment. But let me assure you that if you do find M.A. in the store or buy her online, you will get the big version, the larger one. As you can see in the package, there is the larger one. So no uncertainty there. This is most likely a prototype, a.k.a. a pre-production sample. Now, some people out there may disagree with me about that, and I don't really think anything will change my mind. It's kind of like that Brad Windmiller situation. Again, I reviewed him a couple weeks ago, and I explained that the one I review is actually a prototype because the one that will be released will have a green antenna. Same scenario here, essentially. So this is the prototype, and this is the actual release. Now, I kind of have a funny story about how I got these. So when the cars from this case came up on eBay, loose from Chinese sellers, there were two versions of M.A. Brake Trump, the large one and the small one. So instantly, it popped into my mind that one of them must be a prototype, and I am pretty sure that I am right. Now, at the time when they originally came on eBay, I thought the large one was the prototype because it didn't look as finished, and I just thought that the smaller one was more likely the prototype, but as a couple days went by, I realized that the small one is actually the prototype, but I realized that after I already spent $25 on the large one. So, I went back to eBay, spent $30 on the small one here and that's why I did not include this in my review of the large one because it came like a week or so later and I just figured well I'll show it in my video when I review the entire case so it worked out pretty well and that's my story about how I got this pair let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite I have to go with the large one because this is also kind of interesting since I was saying that this is a family here, Coriander, Brake, and M.A. It would make sense. Well, in the movie, Coriander is quite a bit smaller than the two of them because, you know, it's likely that she is their daughter and it makes sense that she'd be smaller. But when they released Coriander, she was way overscaled. However, when Coriander gets released in like a month or so in the 2016 LA Speedway series, she will be the size of this MA break drum, the small one. And so that's why they ended up releasing a big one to make them all match and make it be perfect. So in a couple months, we should have have a small coriander wide track and then this here family will match what they look like in the movie I hope that made sense I know it'd be kind of hard to understand because there's a lot going on but I hope that did make sense if you have any questions just you know let me know in the comment section below now let's just take a quick look at the small one here as you can see they basically have the same decals and whatnot however their rims are different this one's rims match the rims on Kim Carlin's, which is actually the same model. 
as you can see there. Another thing why, or another reason why this is the prototype is because the windows are unfinished. As you can see, usually they have that black outline, but it's completely gray opaque there. Here's the base as well, which the base kind of is the reason why it's not a factory custom either because we have all that information. If you guys don't know what factory customs are, factory customs are customs made by the Chinese seller. Not really made by them specifically, but they're the ones who sell them, but Mattel does not make them nor sell them like the gold cars or like country McQueens and whatnot. And this one also has the M11 or ML115 license plate. I'm sorry, I know that was confusing. It's just kind of hard to explain, and in all honesty, I'm not a good explainer. But let's move now on to Alex Makino. All right, I don't really have a story for Alex, so let's just get right into the review of him. Now, to start off, I want to say I like how he kind of sways when you roll him around. I just think that's a pretty cool feature for a pity. Now, on the side here, he does have the World Grand Prix emblem with the Italian flag, and he is painted with the Italian flag colors, red, white and green. I also do like his rims there with the red dot on the inside or in the middle. Here's the base. It's held together with a screw so you can easily take Alex apart and kind of have his pieces laying on the ground there. I don't know really why you'd want to do that but maybe you're creative and want to make a custom or something that'd be pretty cool, but I'm definitely not a custom maker. I really do like his expression, very, very nice. And that's pretty much all for the pity himself. And I do want to talk about where he appeared real quick. Now, obviously, Francesco Bernoulli had about 20 pities that look nearly identical throughout the Cars 2 movie. They appeared at all three races, primarily during the Tokyo race, I would say, because you get a really clear shot of three of them that look pretty much the same. So you can really say that one's Alex Makino or that one's Alex Makino. Oh, that one could be Alex Makino too. So really it doesn't matter. Now I do have a small problem with Alex. He's not entirely accurate to the movie. He's supposed to have a red headset on, just like how the Jeff Gorvet pity has a yellow one. So I'm not really sure why Mattel didn't just decide to throw on the headset to make him accurate. So a little disappointing there. Max Schnell's pity has the same problem. He doesn't have a headset either. So, kind of makes me want to choose Jeff Gorvet's Pity as my favorite out of the three here, but I really do like the unique design of Francesco's because it's a little bit more foreign and international rather than just being your typical design like you see with the Piston Cup Pities. As you can see, they're basically the same, a little bit different size, and the cap is obviously flipped. But with Alex Makino, he actually has a completely different model. Now this, however, is not the first time the model has been used by Mattel. You guys remember Jessica Jean Petrel, who was released in late 2014, is the same model. They're more of a rounded design rather than the square designs on Max's Pity, Jeff's Pity, and basically all of the Piston Cup Pities as well. Now even though Jessica and Alex are basically the same model, there are a few differences as you can see with the accessories and the fork placement. Now Alex has the cap with the overhang there. Jessica does not, but she does have a visor and the test tube there. Now I did want to show Guido because he's also a little bit more rounded. Plus he's an Italian pity and so is Alex. So that's one similarity and I feel like it warrants a comparison. So here we go. They're both very, very nice, but very, very different characters indeed. I have to say, even though Alex is a little inaccurate to the movie, I like him more than the other two pities, Jeff 
and Max's just because I like the unique design because we've had so many squared off pities like this one here. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. I've reviewed basically all of them and now it's just nice to have one that's different. So that's why I do like Alex a little bit more. Now let's take a look at his accessories, starting with the stack of tires. Now in the past, Mattel has had some difficulty matching the accessory stack of tires with the tires on the actual die cast. But in this case, they're perfect. They're the same size as you can see and they match exactly. Let's check out the tires on Francesco, Rotelli tires, Pasta, Potenza, and on the accessory, Rotelli tires, Pasta, Potenza, and the red matches as well. So that is just fantastic. And as you guys know, I hate it. Just hate it when Mattel does this to their tire stacks, put that little hole in there so you can have the pity stick their fork in the tire and in my mind that is completely inaccurate and unrealistic because if a pity or a forklift truck would do that in real life the tire would just kind of like pop and deflate so i'm very glad that mattel has kind of like took my advice and made the tires whole so there aren't any holes in there and it fits perfectly on Alex's fork. So 10 out of 10 there. Now let's take a look at the toolbox here. Red has the Royal Grand Prix emblem there with the Italian flag. And that logo is the same one on Francesco minus the number one. Same logo on Alex as well. And on the back here, silver lined drawers and the toolbox itself does not actually roll. The wheels are stationary, but you can slide it around, I guess. And it is hollow on the inside. Now Mattel has been using this toolbox design for a very long time, nearly 10 years. As you can see with the RPM toolbox, this is from 2008. It has not changed one bit. Here's the Jeff Gorvet toolbox. And I'm actually kind of surprised that the Jeff Gorvet toolbox has the number on there, whereas with Francesco's, it does not. Max Schnell's does not have the number either, but it's kind of nice to change it up, I guess. I don't know, maybe Mattel just kind of overlooked it, but not a huge deal to me because the toolbox never actually appeared in the movie. So now let's move on to Jason Hubcap. Jason Hubcap. Now this guy appeared obviously in the Paris parts market when Thin McMissile, Holly Schiffwell, and Mather were looking for Tom Bay and he was in a garage and apparently Thin McMissile thought the garage would be a great place to talk to Tom Bay so he yelled something to Jason in French basically saying to get out, come on, go. And so he essentially told him to leave the garage, which probably was his own property without any reason. And I actually just found out what Finn said, which the translation is go, come on. And so it's a little vague. I'm surprised that Finn actually did that. I actually always thought that Finn said there was a fire or something. I don't know why that was always in my head, but I know I'm wrong now. So that's where Jason appeared. He actually had a couple seconds in the movie, whereas some characters don't even get that much. So obviously Jason drove out of the garage super fast and that's basically where he appeared. Now on this side of Jason, he looks boring. On this side of Jason, it's the rainbow compared to the other side. So I just find it kind of interesting that he got this portion of him repainted or something because it's not a door and obviously it's yellow and the rest of him is like a peach orange color and obviously this door was replaced because it's blue and not the original color so it does remind me of a lemon because for example here we have Stefan Gremski he is mainly green but he got this door replaced to 
yellow because I guess they didn't have a green door available at the time. So I think that's pretty cool that Pixar actually implemented that into the movie. And technically he is a lemon because he is a type of trunk of. Now the trunk of that you may know is like Petra trunk of or Tolga trunk of or Vladimir trunk of. And those are the bad guys that look exactly like this. They kind of go up and go down. Whereas this type of trunk of just goes up and it continues that way. Now Mattel has released quite a few trunk ofs like this. The first one being Ludwig in 2014 and he is huge compared to Jason. Now is this accurate to the movie? We don't know because Jason and Ludwig did not appear next to each other even though they did both appear in France. I like it though that they didn't just keep using Ludwig's model throughout the years and now you might be thinking are you saying that there was another one as well? And yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. After I'm done comparing these two, I'll show the other one. Now these are pretty similar in the fact that they're damaged, rusty, and kind of dirty as well, but they do have their differences. Jason has just a rack on top. Ludwig has a rack as well, but it's filled with luggage. Both of them have these types of side view mirrors that are on the hood there. So generally the same aspects, but different sizes. Now let's check out Brian Gierluski, Rip Clutch Gonski's crew chief, who was released in late 2015. Now, if you look at these kind of from a distance, they look to be the same model, but no, they're different. Check this out. So, Brian is actually a tad bit longer than Jason is. And it might be a little hard to see on the camera, but there's definitely a little bit extra on Brian than Jason. So is the trunk of model like progressively getting smaller over the years? Because check this out. We go from like humongous to like medium size to like mini. So I'm glad that they're changing up the models so they don't keep reusing the same model over and over and over again. So I'm happy about that. Although which size should it actually be? Did the trunk of company really make all these different sizes? I'm not entirely convinced of that. So I don't know what to think. I'm just going to remain with my initial thought. I'm happy that they're changing up the model. So I like Jason's expression a lot. He's worried because Finn just ran into his garage and is like, get out. So it's a nice expression. However, on the card, he looks happy as happy can be. I like the roof rack. It's nice and textured. Now on the back here, he does have a license plate, but can't really read anything off of it. It looks like there were some numbers on there, but they faded or something. And he does have some sort of logo right there, probably relating to his model. It looks to be something 263, but it is so faded and dirty, I can't really read it. I really do like that about Jason because he works in a parts market. And just like with Justin Partson, who also works in the parts market, they're not the cleanest cars. As you can see, Justin is also pretty faded and dirty as well. Now, I like both of these parts market cars that Mattel has released this year. Good job, Mattel. I really, really like them. And I cannot wait for Alexis Wilson, who is the flatbed truck who works in the parts market. So that's about all for Jason here, and now let's move on to Toga. Toga and Jason are definitely my favorites from the case, and I'll try to make a final decision by the end of the video, but you might already have a favorite in mind, and let me know how these four cars, Toga Gremlin, Jason Hubcap, Alex Makino, and M.A. Breakdrum, which one is your favorite. For me, like I said, it's down between the two dirty cars, Toga and Jason. But let's take a look at Toga now. He appeared on the oil rig in the beginning of Cars 2 when Fimic Missile was quartered on the helipad after escaping the explosion. Now, 
there's a scene from the movie where there are three lemons with torches and there were more than that but three were really only shown in that specific like screen there so right front and center was Jerome Rand. You guys probably remember him and you'll be seeing him because I'm posting screenshots on the video. So Jerome was right front and center. To the left of Jerome was Stefan Grumsky, who was released earlier this year. So you guys can probably guess where Toga appeared. Yes, to the right of Jerome, just like this. Very similar to the family of Coriander Y Track Break Boy and MA Break Trump. Right, guys? Well, not really, but they're probably friends because they're bad guys. But getting back on topic, I did want to mention that all three of these have moving visors. You can lift them up just like this. Very nice. And then you can put them down as well. That feature is not on the two lemons released with torches and visors earlier in the Cars 2 line. PD came out in 2013 and Acer came out in 2012. Their visors are stationary. You cannot move them an inch. However, their tanks in the back can be removed from the little cage there. As you can see, I don't really want to break it, but they can come out, as you can see there. But, on the three released this year, in the background there, Toga, Jerome, and Stefan, those tanks are unremovable. So it's like they just kind of switched the movable feature on them. However, I definitely prefer to move the visor up and down than the tanks, because it kind of gives a completely new look to the lemon. You can't see his eyes that clearly like this, but when you lift up the visor, you can see them very, very well. So I really do like that feature about them. And now let's just take a look at Toga alone. So he is pretty dirty, as you can see a bunch of gray stuff splattered up the sides there and his hood and the roof look to be very faded. However, this part of him, the maroon sides, are relatively clean same with the yellow hockey stripe that is what they call these stripes on gremlins by the way not all gremlins have them stefan's a gremlin but he does not have one however grem has a black hockey stripe so just wanted to point that out there now on this side of him he does have his torch and it just kind of goes under the car and disappears into the base. Here is the base, by the way. A lot of information, but I've kind of come to peace with it now because you can't really see it unless you obviously take a look at it. But, you know, if you just have it on display, it's not really a big deal. And obviously, you can lift up his visor. There are his eyes looking very fierce there, wanting to kill Finn McMissile. And his visor is quite dirty. Stefan's visor looks like it just came out of the factory. It's perfectly clean. Jerome's is pretty dirty. About the same amount of dirtiness, I guess you could say, as Stefan's. Got the roof rack there. And here are his tanks that supply him with the torch stuff. I don't really know what to call that. I am not an expert on welding. So, don't really know what these are, probably gas or something, but I might just be talking complete nonsense now, but that is kind of where the wire is supposed to come up. It's supposed to come down like there, and then pop out right there. And the tanks are a little bit different. I do want to compare them because obviously they don't come out anymore, but it's not like they're exactly the same. The tanks and the cage are bigger and different color as well. They're like gray, kind of like a bluish gray, and they have like that black line there, which is not really on that. Well, the whole thing is black. They have like a gold nozzle, not on the new one. I just wanna compare all of them actually. Why now we have orange stripes on this one here. Check out Jerome. Jerome's look to be exactly the same color and everything as Toga's. And one pretty big thing about Toga that I want to mention is the completely like yellow, orange, mustard colored back. That's kind of interesting. We've never really seen that on any gremlins or lemons for that matter in the past where the entire back side of 
of them is a different color than their body. We have, of course, seen different colored doors, like on staff in here, but the back, that is new. So always nice to see a change. And it does say Gremlin right there behind the hockey stripe. So very, very cool. I'm happy to have these in my collection because this very well could be one of the last Gremlins ever released. With Cars 3 coming next year, are there really going to be that many more Lemons released? Maybe, maybe not, not really sure. So here is the whole arsenal of Torch, Lemons, and Pacers. Or What am I talking about? Lemons in general. Sorry about that, guys. Which one is your favorite? I know I'm already asking you which is your favorite from the case, but this is a pretty good question as well. I think my favorite is Jerome Rant. I like that he's named after someone in the cars world. I'm sure these are probably named after people as well, but I know Jerome Rant is the brother, or Jerome Ranft is the brother of Joe Ramped, who died, unfortunately, and was the voice of Red. And that is all for the Cars in Case Ally. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, let me know in the comment section below which one of these is your favorite. I've come to a decision. Jason, Hubcap, buddy, you're my favorite for the reason that... We already have a bunch of lemons with torches, whereas we don't really have that many like rusty, uh, what, what do you call it, you know, like French cars or something, I don't know, I just feel like Jason is a little bit more unique than Toga because, you know, we already have staff in, we already have the other ones as well. So, that's all for this video. I do want to talk about something real quick. Now, this was supposed to come out quite a bit earlier, but I just didn't have time, was not really doing well recording, so I was like, I'm sorry, not going to do it tonight, and the schedule has just kind of been completely wiped clear. I'm not really going by the schedule at the moment, Kind of on the break, but not really. We'll see what happens. I might change my schedule temporarily to only one suggestion video per week. That will eventually change, I hope, but I don't really want to say anything for sure, just in case it doesn't. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video despite it being late. I think it was, you know, a decent video because I always do enjoy reviewing these cases. And the next case will be case... And I think with Brad Windmiller, Darla Vanderson, and Coriander Wytra, and that will indeed conclude the year. Another review that will actually be coming out before is of the Super Chase, Jay Lowly. Indeed, he's a Super Chase, so stay tuned for that review whenever it does come out. I'll see you guys later. Bye now.